Hello YouTube Vintage Stereo Collectors and Restores. Well in southwestern Ontario here it's another rainy stormy day. It seems uh, we've had a lot of rain in June and in May and it's continuing to July. Been some bad storms in different areas. So I'm where I should be sitting out on the patio you know with a drink and some chips I'm inside working on this and that's not bad. I just thought, um, although I'm waiting for capacitors on this one, the 2200s, I didn't have any stock of those, or the 3300, a 50 volt, you need a 63 volt because it sits around 54. So I thought, well, okay, I ordered the stuff, it should come Tuesday. I'll work on some of the small signal caps and I thought, this tuner didn't sound that great. It has, I won't call it, like, okay, if you do a search, Marantz tuner, um, no FM stereo, muting doesn't work properly, FM sounds dead, those type of things, you'll find that's one of the things that comes back. That, uh, First of all, I think our expectations sometimes are very high on tuners too, but if you've had a few tuners that are fantastic, oh, like the Sansui TU-717, I always like that one. Um, just turn it on, you see how nice it looks. And I could not, this one was doing the same type of stuff. It's got a foot long piece of wire on it. Whether FM muting was on or off. Only the absolute strongest stations came in in stereo, if at all. You know what? I did that Yamaha CR662 um, weeks ago. It had the same issue. And it's actually the same problem. Um, let's spin around and show you the board here. As you can see, it is picking up things in stereo now. So, this is the tuner board here. By the time these came out, they were packing the tuners down. They had to improve the circuitry, and you're seeing some 14-pin integrated circuits showing up in these. Uh, you're also seeing phase lock loop tuners, that design which locks onto the carrier. That's what this is. And so basically, you have a lot less tuning cores. Tuning cores here are for the AM radio. Of course, you still have um, slugs to turn or screws to turn on the actual tuner. There's a few over here for FM. The discriminator is right there. The rest of it is direct coupled, just like the Yamaha tuners of the time. Um, there's, it's actually one. Of, let, let's bring the issue down, okay? They used a chip, this is a schematic, the HA1156, and these are the instructions I line, HA1156 and HA1151. This is in the IF, and this is the stereo demodulator. This one's already been changed. The HA1156, the original, had a fault. If you put a bulb it ran the stereo bulb directly off the chip instead of a transistor like earlier ones. In earlier ones, either the bulb was bad or the transistor that drove it was bad. In this case, I think what happened is somebody had changed the stereo bulb, put one in of a higher wattage rating, whatever, or accidentally shorted it and blew the chip. Because, I don't know how well this is going to show up, as soon as I started looking at it, I realized something here. Right here, it had been desoldered and resoldered. There's also a wax coating on them. This one doesn't have a wax coating. And so it was substituted with an MC1310P, which is very, very close. But there's a couple things that are different. One is pin 8. Pin 8 takes a ground, if you put a ground on pin 8, it mutes the stereo, puts it into mono. 
but it's also variable. Depending how low the voltage is to ground, it will blend stereo down into mono. And the other chip wasn't good at doing that. So what you ended up here was too much, <laughs> too close to ground in that circuit design. It was constantly, unless it's, it was a super strong station, putting it into mono, which is not much fun to listen to. Um, there's also, there's two things, and you can go from FM stereo to FM on this switch. There's also an FM muting switch. Out is without muting. Okay. In is with muting and in full stereo. Neither way was right. And I've run into this, and if you do a search on it, like I say, you'll see that all the time. Uh, muting is too aggressive. And you know what? I've played with resistors on them. I've tweaked things. Thought I had it just about right. But signal strength and noise is a fickle thing. And there's two types of muting circuits. Earlier muting circuits, which seem to work better, are based on signal strength alone. So if the signal strength isn't quite up to a certain threshold, it doesn't come on in stereo. That simple. Okay, it mutes it, or it does not allow it to come in stereo, which kills the noise. This type you actually measures noise, stray noise off the discriminator circuit. So based on, it's like a how can I put it? What's the thing you call it? It's like a comparator circuit. Basically, if you put a scope on there, which is what I did on on post 121, you can see the noise at the discriminator, and that's what's turning on the muting circuit. And you can tweak the discriminator to lower the noise, but then you lose the sensitivity of the tuner. Like there's a hole, you can't quite get it right, okay? That's, you'll, if you read some stuff, you'll know the frustration. Here's what you have to do. Simple fix to open this tuner up and make it sing in stereo and have full sensitivity. Okay, right there you'll see three unsoldered lands. You go into this little schematic here. There's a transistor and it puts a ground onto pin 8. And it's transits Q302. Some show it as H302. And take just unsolder and remove it. Okay? Because it will be constantly putting it into mute and killing your FM. And I spent hours on these over the years trying to get them right. You know, people bring it back and say, well, the muting is still too strong. And you know, like, this is what you do. You get rid of the muting. So now it's in full stereo. I did an alignment. It's picking up tons of state. It opened up like you wouldn't believe. Sounding so good. The alignment on these is actually pretty easy. You don't need a scope, just a multimeter. It'll tell you which post to put your meter on and which core or which screw to turn. And you're measuring voltages with the exception of one thing. Um, the, the 19 kilohertz oscillator, you need a scope. You can do it by ear for the strongest stereo reception, but I found it was off. It was about 19,200 kilohertz, where I thought it was right. Then I put my scope on it, tweaked it. That's the only place, um, and when you're doing the stereo separation and stereo demodulator alignment. So if you follow these instructions, it actually lines right up and perks right up, and you'll be very happy with it. Okay? And I've left it, so the FM muting is still there. If you turn the muting on, you'll find only the crankingest stations. I'm sorry, I'm sounding like the 80s again. Only the absolute strongest stations will break through that muting the way it was set up from the factory and with the 1310 chip. And that's what threw a lot of these out, changing that chip. It's just... The muting thresholds changed. That works so nice now. Anyway, I decided to do a little update on that. 
and then I'm going to start doing some capacitors. Thanks for watching and listening.